Well, good morning, everybody. Russ Barkley back again with another commentary related to ADHD. You just can't keep a good retired boomer down. Got to keep working here. Got to keep getting the information to you guys. So uh, today I want to talk about something that I'm not seeing an awful lot of research on anymore nor have I ever seen it get into the trade media, even back when a lot of this research was going on. And that is on the subject that ADHD medications may be associated with neuroprotection. Now, what am I talking about here? Neuroprotection means that somehow ADHD medications may either be protective of other conditions or may actually be promoting brain growth in the areas of the brain that are found to be smaller or deficient or dysfunctional in ADHD. It's really the latter that we're talking about. So I think the term neuroprotection, which has been borrowed from the literature on antidepressants, really is, I think, better phrased as neuropromotion in ADHD research. You see, over in the antidepressant literature, it was found that if people took antidepressants for a sustained period of time, there was a decline in the risk of late life disorders often associated with the elderly, such as dementia. That is true neuroprotection. Taking a medication for one reason is protecting you against other adverse outcomes down the road. Okay, we get that. But in the case of ADHD, what the research has been focusing on is whether or not taking medication, primarily stimulants, for a sustained period of time, usually at least two years or more, does this result in improved brain growth compared to people who didn't take medication? The answer seems to be possibly yes. In fact, I find the results of this research rather stunning. I mean, we often hear about, oh, ADHD drugs are destroying the brain and oh, they're causing lots of problems and they lead to drug abuse. And of course, none of that has been shown to be the case when we look at ADHD medications as they are being prescribed. So, you know, there's a lot of nonsense out there about ADHD medications and their impact on, you know, negative impact that is on the brain. Here we're talking about a positive impact. And by the way, this is not just one or two studies. So let's take a quick look at this because I'm surprised that A, there hasn't been a lot more research lately on this, and B, that the media doesn't cover it. Imagine that. There might be positive benefits from taking ADHD medications, but the trade media doesn't want to talk about it. But oh boy, come across with any study, no matter how poor, that shows that ADHD medications might lead to some adverse effects, such as maybe dementia. We've talked about that here. And oh my God, the media is all over that. Gee, do you think there might be just a little bit of bias in how the trade media tends to cover medications for ADHD? I kind of think so, but let's have a look here. You, you decide. There was a paper published by Ivanov back in 2013 that compared the cerebellum and its morphology, its structure, in 46 children with ADHD compared to 59 children without ADHD, and then it broke down the results further by which kids took medication and which kids did not. And what they found is that relative to the comparison participants, the children who took or, or who had ADHD had smaller regional volumes in certain parts of the cerebellum. We don't need to go into that. Here is what they're talking about. All right, here's the cerebellum and you see the highlighted areas in the graph are those in which there was smaller brain volume. Now, let me just back this up because they found, however, that in children who had been taking stimulant medication, there was positive growth in these brain regions, supporting the effects of stimulant treatment. So here's where the deficiencies are. 
Now let's take a look. These areas that are deficient in the cerebellum, look at the bottom of the, of the screen in particular, you see the circled ones. These are correlated with how severe the symptoms are. Now let's take a look. Here we're comparing children who took medication versus ADHD kids who didn't. And notice these lighter colors. They're showing that there's been growth in certain areas of the cerebellum. Wow. Taking stimulant medication may actually promote brain growth in ADHD. But wait, there's more. In 2010, Sobel did a study comparing 47 children with ADHD against 57 controls. And again, they also did a subgroup comparison of kids on and off medication. And they found that in the kids not on medication, there was evidence of anatomical dysregulation in the basal ganglia. But when they compared stimulant treated to untreated ADHD cases, it suggested that the stimulants may normalize these morphological changes. Don't believe me? Here you go. This is the basal ganglia. It's been broken down into three of its nuclei, the caudate, the putamen, and the globus pallidus, as you see on the bottom of my slide. Now, if you look at the caudate on the left, or the putamen in the middle, or the globus pallidus on the right. See all that blue color? That's showing that in comparing ADHD children to typical children, there's a lot less volume in these three regions of the basal ganglia. No surprise, we've seen that in many other studies before this one and subsequently to this one. Now, here's comparing the people who took medication to the people who didn't, okay? And what do we see, okay? We see that, see the bright colors here, particularly toward the yellow and orange spectrum? They indicate that patients taking stimulants had increased brain volumes in the three parts of the basal ganglia. Whereas over here in the patients not taking stimulants, we continue to see the smaller brain regions. So that is very impressive in showing some changes also in the basal ganglia, another part of the brain believed to be involved in ADHD. Here we have a further, not only a study, it's actually a meta-analysis of 11 different studies looking at MRI at cortical at brain volume, that is, not just the cortex, brain volume in individuals with ADHD, and then looking at those who were on medication and those not on medication. And what they found, of course, is that when you compare ADHD children and adults to typical people, you see smaller volumes in these indicated areas of the brain. However, when you compare those who took stimulant medication, which they did in this meta-analysis, there were 11 studies in it, we show evidence that patients treated with stimulant medication showed increased brain volumes in these areas. See that at the bottom? Treatment might have a positive effect on long-term changes in the brain, but we need follow-up studies to confirm that. Well, that was back in 2012. Whoa, in 2013, my friend Tom Spencer does a review of the literature finding 29 studies looking at the effects of stimulant medication on brain growth. And what he finds is that there is less of a difference between ADHD brains and typical brains in people who were taking oral stimulants than in individuals who were unmedicated. Thus, these medication-associated brain effects may parallel and even underlie the long-term clinical benefits of these medications. But wait, not just 29 studies, there is more. In 2016, there was a study done with adults, and it showed that there was enhanced development of the frontal lobe gray matter in adults taking stimulant medications, and it was correlated with how long they had been on medication. And by the way, I found yet another study in 2023 that also found 
increased cortical volumes in patients taking medications. Now, since the non-stimulants, like atomoxetine, share about 70 to 80 percent of the brain regions they affect with the stimulants and their brain regions, it's very possible that non-stimulant medications might have this neuroprotective effect, but we don't know that. That's just a hypothesis. What we do know is we've got 31 studies in the literature showing that taking medication for several years or longer increases brain volumes in the cortex, in the cerebellum, and in the areas of the basal ganglia, which are usually smaller and less developed in people with ADHD. I think that's astounding. And yet I am flummoxed, I am befuddled as to why you never heard about this in the trade media and why subsequent studies to these have not continued to investigate this. Is something going on out there? I mean, I hate to formulate a conspiracy theory. Well, maybe with the trade media there is, but you know, are, is there just no funding for this? Are we afraid to discover there might actually be positive effects of medication on the brain from these ADHD medications? I, I don't know, you, you be the judge out there. All I can tell you is that 31 studies is a lot of studies finding this effect. And while yes, more longitudinal studies would be nice to have, there was one, as I said, in 2023, finding increased brain volume in teens who stayed on medication, particularly in the cortex, but we don't know, okay? At this point, more research is indicated. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. I hope you found this interesting because I think we need to dig a little deeper into this and get some more research on it. But in the meantime, Russ Barkley here thanking you again for watching these commentaries and my channel for uh, obviously subscribing. And if you're not a subscriber, think about it. It's a good channel. We do Saturday research reviews here with bad dad jokes to start off as well. Thank you everybody for joining me. And as always, when I sign off, live well and be well. Thank you.